All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you a host of different options that you can use to get started with Llama 2. So Llama 2 is a host of models that was recently released by Meta that allows you to now use their large language model for commercial use. So prior to Llama 2, you were restricted in being able to actually commercialize a product out of their language model. So the big thing with this is so long as you have an and the magic number is less than 700 million users, you'll be able to use this for your application. So I think I can speak for all of us where, you know, I think that's most of us, if you're watching this video, that will be able to use this and build something that we can actually use for commercial purposes, which is awesome. So one thing to know with Llama, and I think part of why the reason why so many people are excited about this is because it's open source. And I just wanna to touch on that just for a moment. So developers, myself included, love when things are open source. So if you just think about it for a moment, there's probably a host of different open source libraries that you're using or have used. So it could be anything from, you know, Linux running on your Android phone to the projects that you're actively developing and being able to, you know, NPM install all those different dependencies. So being able to open source this and have a community of developers and engineers work and fine tune and refine and create different versions of it is huge. And this is by far, if we just look at some of the benchmarks, the best open source model in a host of different areas. So I'm not going to touch on all these different benchmarks, but depending on your use case, um, just look through these benchmarks. You know, a part of me wish uh, these benchmarks were a little clearer in terms of what they're actually measuring. Um, but if you read through these, you might already be familiar with some of these in terms of what they're measuring. But you can see here within this column here, how it stacks up to a couple other popular open source models like the MPT model as well as Falcon. And then you can see how it uh, has compared um, in uh, to Llama 1 in, in you know where it's comparing the 70B model here. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is if you want to pull this down and set it up locally, the tool that I found to do this is this text generation web UI. So the easiest way to set this up is if you go to the GitHub repo and you just scroll down here, if you go to their one-click installers, that was the approach I took. If you wanna go through and you know walk through you know how to set it up a, a bit more manually, you can do that as well but I found I downloaded the installer and it just runs so you can go and execute that uh, shell script and it will run through downloading everything that you need to get going so once you have that downloaded you can go ahead and fire it up you'll see it locally here and the nice thing with this is you'll be able to download custom models here. So I don't actually have it downloaded here um, right yet, but if you wanted to, you can just go over to Hugging Face and I'll just uh, go back here just for a moment because if you want to use the model directly from Meta, you do have to request access. So you can see I've requested access for this. I still don't have access, but you can go and find uh, some other options uh, to be able to use this locally. So you see there's this user, the bloke here, where there is uh, a model where you can pull this down. So I tested this just before this video where I copied this, put it within here and it started to download. So one thing just to note with this, um, so it does give you the option to run on a GPU or your CPU. So depending on your hardware, you can specify it while you're running through that install, it will prompt you in the terminal with uh, which option you'd like. So just a heads up on that. And then for the actual uh, files that you'll need, so if you're running low on storage space, like I am, <laughs> um, which is why I'm not demonstrating this, you can see uh, the amount of storage space that you need to run it. So you can look through uh, some of the different uh, options to use it as well if you'd like. Uh, but as you see here, this is the text generation web UI that I showed you just uh, a moment ago. So I'll have links to everything in the description of this video if you're curious to use any of these uh, different um, repos or services. So next I'm gonna show you uh, the option from Replicate. So Replicate recently 
uh, released this pretty soon after it came out. And if you're not familiar with Replicate, it's a very easy way for Python, Node.js developers to easily access models. So there's a whole host of models on their on their uh, platform from uh, text to image models like stable diffusion or large language models like this. So this gives you a nice little playground that you can play around with. You can change you know, the max length temperature, stuff like that, similar to the OpenAI API playground. And you can just go ahead and submit queries. So you don't have to go in and even sign in. You see, I'm not even signed in here. And you can see, okay, it's, it's giving, uh, uh, it a prompt and it's running through. So you see it's it's not super fast or snappy necessarily, but it sort of gives you an idea if you want to play around with some of these uh, more, you know, uh, um, nuanced op uh, options for, for playing with the model. So also with Replicate, it makes it really easy to use for, like I mentioned, Node.js or Python developers. So you can go ahead and install their package. You can grab your API key and then you can be essentially off to the races. So it works very similar to the hugging face uh, Node.js wrapper where you can just reach for that model if it's available for inference. So essentially like if you uh, have access to use it as if it was like an API. Um, so you can go ahead and use this if you'd like. So there is, are some pricing options on using their API. I haven't run into the limits of you know how, when it actually bills me, but uh, if you'd like to play around with Replicate, that is an option for you and you can check out pricing. It's pretty well laid out. So one thing to note with the pricing is that there's a difference between the uh, fine tuning options and training a model and then actually inference. So when you're looking through here, just be mindful of that. So next, uh, another thing with Replicate while I'm on uh, their services is they just open sourced a framework to tune the model. And the thing that I found interesting with this is it gives a bit of an example on, you know, if you'd like to further fine tune a model and some of the costs that it might take and the amount of hardware. So you can read through this if you'd like to take something like the Llama model and further fine tune it if you already have an idea on how you want to use it for your particular use case. So really interesting. I haven't actually used this. Um, but you can see, you know, if you have, you know, a product that you want to ship and you need a fine tuned model that's open source, this is probably a good option to consider. Okay, so next, Hugging Face. So Hugging Face does have a sort of chat GPT like competitor that's sort of like, you know, Bard or the Claude 2 Anthropic model where it has a little uh, web GUI that you can just go to the site and it just starts to work. So the thing with their Hugging Face chat is it has the ability to search the web, which is really nice. So if you'd like to tie in this model with that functionality, switch that on and then you can ask a question like a common one that people use is like, what is Langchain? So Langchain, if you put that in something like ChatGPT, it might hallucinate and try and say that this is a some blockchain related thing when it's it's not right. It's something used for, you know, it's like an LLM framework. You can think of it as so you can see here. It also gives you the breakdown of what it's doing. And you can see, OK, it's saying what is LinkedIn rather than what is Langchain. So not exactly what I want, but let's just try it one more time. Let's say what. Oh, and it's asking me to sign in. So I'm not actually going to sign in here. Uh, that wasn't the best example of it, but it gives you a really nice uh, user interface if you'd like to play around with it. So really easy. I'd encourage you to try it both with searching the web. Let me know the results in the comments if you had better luck than what I just demonstrated or uh, if there's uh, if you find it's not working well. So try both, let me know either way. But very nice interface and it also gives you that chat GPT-like experience where it saves your chats on the left-hand side there. Okay, so next is the SDK Vercel.ai site, which is awesome. So I, I love what Vercel is doing just across the board. In terms of development, their platform, they do sometimes get criticism on it being some sometimes expensive, but considering what it can do, it's amazing for what you get. Um, so the thing with 
uh, Vercel, uh, so they released this about a month ago or so, is it gives you the ability to compare across different models. So if I wanted to go ahead and select, you know, Lama 13B, let's say Lama 13B and Lama 7B V2, and then compare it to uh, GPT 3.5 Turbo, I can say, uh, tell me a short story. So just something broad. You can see, okay, GPT 3.5s outputting right away, streaming those responses. You can see the 13B model, it's taking a little bit longer and it wants to give me a sort of a short response here and just sort of looking at all these different options here, but let's say, tell me a scary story and you see it's hanging here which is interesting so okay so that didn't look like it was streaming the responses um, but you can see that it does give me a story so i'm not going to read through this but this is just sort of a great option for being able to compare different models if you'd like to do that and then finally now this is the one um, that I found is the best for inference. So this one is really, really fast. So I haven't actually seen uh, an inference model web UI that has this fast of a output. So if I just show you, let's just go with their small model. Let's just say, write me a short story. So you can see here it's outputting incredibly fast and it even gives you the speed. So perplexity, uh, is sort of interesting to think about what they're doing behind the scenes. It's probably a combination of both uh, putting more hardware, but then also it seems like on the inference side that there might be some uh, breakthroughs potentially that they have to make it as fast as it is. So if I just say, let's make this story longer. So you can see it's really, really fast. So it's similar to uh, uh, GPT 3.5 uh, by the looks of it. But when I was using this on my phone, it was like almost to the point where that streaming text response, it was like too fast. I'd almost like want like, you know, a, a couple sentences, couple sentences, and then just have it sort of load in the background. I, I don't know exactly the UI to resolve that, but uh, it can feel a little overwhelming, just like, you know, it, it's streaming out all those responses. So it'll be interesting to see like, that, you know, once these models get really, really fast and it, you know, say it can just output this whole blurb of text in one shot, um, what that UI will look like, uh, you know, will it sort of, I don't know, load a sentence at a time or because, you know, like as humans, we can only read so fast. So um, just sort of a side thought. So hopefully you found this useful. There's a handful of options to get started. There is a 70 plus page white paper that you can read on the nuances of uh, the llama models, how they were trained um, and how they were fine tuned and, you know, all the different things that they've done uh, for safety and whatnot. There's also a handful of videos on YouTube that you can check out that have great resources. There's a lot of other YouTubers doing amazing work with uh, covering this sort of stuff, but I wanted to do a different take and just sort of show you what's out there. So if you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe, and otherwise until the next one.